Welcome to Mariposa Woolen Mill Needle Felting Kit Instruction. Felting is causing the fibers to intermingle and mat together, and there's a couple ways that you can do that. Wet felting is one way, which is hot water, a bit of soap, and a lot of friction. And the other way is needle felting, which I'm going to demonstrate to you. The needles that you use for felting have ridges that encourage the fibers to grab onto the other fibers. And the more that you poke it, the more that it felts. It's always best to use a surface like a foam or a rice pad to protect the needle because it's fragile and it's also very sharp. Everything you need is included in the kit, so let's get started. Our four season felting kit begins like this. First, we establish where we want our tree, and I'll just work you through that. So using the black, I'm just gonna make a black tree, which I found it reads fine in the image. So let's decide where we want our tree and the thickness of it. Okay. So we're just going to anchor it down. And that's the center of the trunk there. So it's going to have a bit of a curve as it goes down. So just divide, divide your rest of that roving. You don't need to use all of it. Use what's left over the top there. So at this stage, if you want to, to modify the shape, you can pull it up, move it around. It's gonna put in some exposed roots. you'll be able to change how it looks down here when you start adding the greens uh, to the ground. Okay. So this part takes a, a, a little bit more care. As you're going up, still want a bit of thickness on those branches. Okay, so to create the the thin, thick and thin branches, just take a bit, a small piece, starting at the larger part like the either at the trunk or something that you've established that's kind of thick I want you to anchor it down and then give a little bit of a tug and as you do that as you poke as you go it's going to have a thick and thin effect so do that have a nice um, amount of branches so that you can fill them with the different colors. The, the bright greens have a fuller bright green here, place where you can put your, your leaves and then branches. So you want to have the same kind of weight. Doesn't have to look symmetrical. The same kind of weight on each side
So we'll just continue that and um, until you're happy with the amount of branches you have. And if you want to extend it out to the edge on the winter side over here, make sure you leave a little bit of space here for your, your bird and the scenery that goes off to the side there. So just leave a, just be mindful of that space so you can have, um, add your little blue jay there. So just continue to create these little twigs, little branches. Like I said, it doesn't have to be symmetrical, so. So let's plot in our ground using white on this side. You want it to be pretty full, so you may want to layer it just a little bit. Just keep in mind where your tree is. So you don't completely lose it. It's okay if a little bit of blue shines through. It's not really shining, but peeks through. So you want to leave space for the winter, the fall, the spring, and the summer. So just plan that out. Use up all of our white. So we still need to add some to the trees up top. So I left a little bit of white. And we can add a little bit of brown later on. So let's just establish the ground and then we'll add the, de the, the details on top. Um, just the different elements that indicate the season. Next one, let's go ahead and just put some brown. Use that light brown. Light brown and a tiny bit of that olive green, just very little. Okay, be mindful of your tree roots. 
And you could always add the white back in if you wanted it to be, if you feel like you've covered it up just a bit. You can always add those colors back in. just a little bit more because I'm going to put my spring right here and my summer over here. And of course we'll add our fallen leaves right in this area. Okay, so let's move on to our spring which we'll use mostly The olive summer just use that brighter green and it looks like I'm gonna add a bit more black right there but I'll do that in a minute backside be a mixture of our browns and greens. It doesn't necessarily have to show um, summer, but let's put up the dark green. indicate that hill. So we're not going to put any sky, we're just going to let the blue stand alone. Because we have quite a bit going on in that area. So right now we're just going to create a bank for our little river or our little stream I should say. back here or you could create um, oak trees you have enough brown whichever whatever you'd like So we've established our ground and we'll move on to other detail. So now we're ready to add some detail. You could start anywhere. Let's just start with the tree. We use this bright green and add to our summer area. Actually, sorry, spring area. Just 
doing little little patches. New growth. Okay, moving on to the summer. So it's larger pieces of that brighter green. So we're moving on to fall, which we'll use the red, orange, the dark brown, 
and the, the bright green. So just applying small little bits. Maybe hard to make it look like a leaf, but what you can do so that it has a point on one side, you can anchor it down, twist it, make it into a circle, but then before it's felted too much, pull it to one side so it has a little tapered edge. Twist and then pull. So then it has a little bit of an elongated look as well. So just fill your that section of your tree. Keeping in mind you want this to be your winter. So that quarter, uh, fill it with these little different di colors. And it doesn't really matter how you add them. They can overlap. So just fill that area. Next, let's just add the white snow that's collected on some branches using very tiny bits. Start from one end, just line those branches that you already have. As if the snow is setting along the top of it. And just stay on the top half of the branch. 
which makes the most sense. Now we're not showing ice, we're only showing snow. I think making it ice would complicate So going over all of your piece and just uh, felting everything down nice and smooth before you add your real detail would be a good idea. can use two needles to get it done quicker. tree tree that's by the bank of this stream using the dark brown 
just going to have it rest on the bank there. Have it lean a little bit. Add some outstretched branches. of that so it sets down a bit more get a little bit of shadow Use that bright green. I want the foliage to kind of drape like a willow. You can put whatever kind of whatever kind of tree you want there. So the way that I'm gonna approach it is these little fuzzy edges. I'm just gonna want them to come to a point. up and down, force them to kind of look drapey. So next, you can just add in some white for the stream, very small, and spread out the fibers so it kind of looks like it's trailing in the water. Giving it a little pull. Next, we can add tiny little flowers out in the field on the hill using very minuscule pieces. As as many as you'd like, I suggest using extra small pieces wool. I'm going to add a little bit of yellow. I'm going to add it in a... spread it out so that wherever 
I poke, possibly I'll get like a heavier space of yellow. So it looks like yellow flowers in the field. Okay. Next we can just add some add some flowers to our spring area. So we'll just put some tulips. So we'll just use the dark green. I like to start at the top, give a little tug, so then it has a tapered edge. Okay, and adding our flowers, use whatever colors you'd like. I choose yellow, kind of twirl it in. I don't want it to have an elongated look, so I'm going to poke it in that way. using my needle to direct the fibers where I want them to go. Add some white flowers, maybe kind of uh, like a little daffodil maybe or something. And just for good measure, we'll add some pink in there. Okay, and like I said, you can add Many more colors, whatever fits the season where you live. Next, we'll just use some of the bright green in contrast to what we already have there. We have that olive green, so we'll just use something brighter. Create some foliage. And we just make some daffodils and put some yellow centers to them.
it's a little bit of the dark green to just give the, the stems and the foliage a little bit of more contrast than what I've seen here. And then we're going to add our fallen leaves, do some red, some orange, brown, we can do multiple leaves. So just handle it the same way. Actually just do it opposite, like um, make it twist up so it's like it looks fallen, so it has like a little um, curved bottom. Or they can just lay flat, however you like. Okay, we'll add just a little bit of snow to our evergreens here in the back. Snow that's kind of collected. Kind of thick and thick and thin, so you can see the green behind. So if you want to add a bunny and just use that dark brown, a little bit of black and some white. Gonna mingle the colors together. I'm gonna draw him basically with the black and then I can add those colors on top, the mixed colors.
So continue the bunny. So I've got an outline. So just add these little mixed colors to make his body. So we can make this bunny, which is a little bit different than the one in the sample, just for the sake of time, we can make that his back. And we can put a little cotton tail on him. Oh, so cute. Bunny is done. Unless you want to add more detail to him, which is perfectly fine. So to add our nest, we're going to use some of the yellow and black. So I'll set it right there. Adding just a little bit of blue. So now moving on to our blue jay, let's just map him out with the dark blue and a wingspan there. It's almost like a semicircle, it's more like an arch. And so it's her body and tail. And we'll place the head on even though it's a lot of it is more detailed. It's not just a blue. So
Okay, so adding a bit of bright blue across the back, down the tail. Let it flow over into the to the wings. Using the black, just going to tip the wings might want to get a little bit of um, or maybe in a magnifying glass or something just for this detail it's um it's a little bit of a challenge. So let's add on that white, white for the face. It's almost the shape of a triangle. And if it looks like your your bird is disappearing within the mat, just need to felt that area around it. And that's how much felting this pad needs. So um, depends on how soft it is. So let's line the bottom of the wings. You could get out some scissors and just, once you felt it a little dot on the tail, you can snip it off. So come to the completion of your, your bird, which has got a great deal of detail. Don't be discouraged if you don't like the way that it's turned out. You can always just pull it up. And what needs to be done for this, this particular mat is that it needs to be felted over diligently so that everything is the same level. But I won't bore you with that. So this is our completed project. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for joining me today. Hope this video was helpful. So to replenish your belting supplies, just visit us at the farm market. Or